Guys, hello! Happy Saturday. Welcome on in to another fantastic episode of Bar Talk. I promise you it's going to be a good one tonight. I'm really excited. I hope everyone has enjoyed their Saturday doing whatever it is that you had to do. Maybe you had to go around the house and get some stuff done. Maybe you had to clean. Maybe, you, I don't know. Whatever you had to do, you had to do. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Joe... Uh, J, J. O'Keefe, Golfer Hicks, Anna, Fran, hello. Guys, welcome on into another episode. I'm really excited for tonight. And I know you guys think I'm probably kidding when I say this, but I know you have a lot of options and places to go to for content night in and night out. And I'm very grateful that you're choosing to spend your evening with me. Hi, Anna, I miss you, babe. Also, I was thinking that I really need a Punky's Pot Roast sandwich soon. So I'm going to be over real, real soon. Okay, um, guys, few things really quick before we kind of dive on in and I bring in my next guest for you. So as you know, there will be no show tomorrow. I don't do the shows on Mondays because I've been watching The Last Dance. But with that being said, guys, tomorrow is Mother's Day. So I wanted to give a very warm... Um, happy Mother's Day to all of the mamas out there, mine in particular, and to my Aunt Jos. Happy Mother's Day to all of the amazing women in our lives. Um, if you can be spending it with them tomorrow, love on them, maybe a little extra harder. And if you can't be with your mom, know that she's still with you because I think moms just don't ever leave your side. They just don't. So, Mama, Happy Mother's Day. Uh, another thing, I want to give a shout out to all of the graduates. So guys, congratulations, okay? I know, again, none, no one thought that this is what, or this is how your graduation would be. No one did, but here we are and it is what it is. So um, I just wanted to say congratulations and I want to give a shout out to my alma mater, De La Salle. Um, they've been doing, uh, I just think that the people are making this special for the seniors in the best way possible and i love how they're, what they're doing they're going to their houses they're giving them these little like yard pennants so um it's really cool and speaking of deal cell i so i have a deal cell hat on it's actually by grit so as you guys remember um that tonight's episode is brought to you by grit clothing and you will get a 15 percent um coupon to use it's called bar talk 15 um so let me put it in here. So bar talk. I forgot to copy and paste it beforehand. So 15. Uh, so you can use that. And basically they will, um, I don't know, it's great right now. Like I don't like to do my hair anymore. And I love having a hat on because it covers everything up. Like you guys don't know how greasy my hair is under here. And uh, that's okay. <laughs> so... So, okay, let me just pin this really quick. I think I got it. Hello, Noah. Um, okay, pinned comment. Perfect. Okay, got it. Um, and guys, lastly, I want to give a shout out really quick to someone that I ha that is watching. They're going to be embarrassed by it, and I'm sorry. I got a cameo today from Adam Engel congratulating me on Bar Talk, and this was from Mr. Catfish. So, Mr. Catfish, thank you very much for the cameo. I, it put the biggest smile on my face. I couldn't believe it. And maybe this means we just need to get Adam Angle on the show now, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, what am I drinking? I'm drinking a White Claw. Um, I drank a lot of wine last night, so I was a little nervous that I wasn't maybe going to be able to drink. But, guys, I'm not going to let you down. So, cheers. Okay, tell me what it is that all of you guys are drinking. And as you're telling me, let me tell you about our guest this evening. So we have uh, Lexi Brown on. I'm so excited. Lexi plays in the uh, WNBA with the Minnesota Lynx. She also plays overseas. She is an alumni of Duke and has two degrees from there. And she comes from a basketball family. Her dad's D Brown. Uh, he won the dunk contest in 91 um played in with a few teams and had a little stink with the uh boston celtics predominantly so let me go ahead and get lexi on in again i think we're it's loading and i'm gonna see what is going on very excited how are you hi i'm good i am loving your hair right now i wish i could do oh, like a top like bun you. like that it's fantastic. You, it, you know, that <laughs> love it. was amazing. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. Okay. So tell me, what are you drinking with me this evening? I have some red wine. <gasps> Lovely. 
Oh, that's a cute glass. My Little. mom has like a bunch of them, so. She's, moms are the best. Well, cheers, lady. Thank you again cheers. for joining me. I really appreciate it. Okay, so um, it's kind of, life is weird right now. Let's just state the obvious. Life is really weird. And uh, you're supposed to be starting in like a week. Have you heard anything in regards to like what they're trying to do or is everything right now just like a to be determined yeah well um starting last week so our training camp was supposed to start april 25th or 24th so um once that like passed the uh, you know us officially like not starting we yeah. started having like um like zoom team meetings so um we've had two so far and they like just tell us a little bit um, like as much as much as they know, I mean, with this situation, it's like they there's nothing like they can really tell us because it, it's not up to them. So, yeah. um, you know, we're just postponed, you know, for probably at least another month or so. Um, so like now we're starting like having like our intro to the team type meetings on Zoom. Like mm -hmm. our coach, she had like a little PowerPoint type presentation uh, the other day that we had to watch. We are like getting to our position coaches we're like gonna do like little small group workouts like maybe like a, a core workout or like a ball handling workout so we're just doing stuff like that but um they're not really telling <laughs> 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 it's like such a it's such a weird situation yeah because um, we're just it's just we sit and wait but you still at the same time they're telling us like it could all be okay like in a second and you like you guys still have to be ready to come and perform. So it's like we, I'm still working out. Like we have a game like next week. Yeah, no, we have a game next week, but we might, you know. But it's but you need to keep that like mindset and mentality that like you could have a game next week. Exactly, and they were just saying like it's just it's easier to to dial it down than to have to like turn it on like immediately. So that's what that's just how I've been like handling it. That is. Uh... God, that's crazy. What have been some of the, like, obstacles of, like, I, I guess being confined to where you're at? Like, do yeah. you have access to, like, a, like a gym or, like a, like, a, like, a court or anything where you can at least still, like, be active? Oh, yeah. So, well, when I first got home from overseas, it was, like, literally, like, a few days before all this started. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, we didn't have access to a gym, so we were working out a, on an outdoor court, which I hate. It was hot, it was windy, there's bugs. So like, I was like pissed. So um, <laughs> now we have access to a gym, which has been amazing. Um, I've been doing like all of my weight training and conditioning at home. Mm -hmm. um, my trainer, he just reopened his gym like a week and a half ago. So I've just been going there um but sometimes like i want to use the track so like actually I, was, I like was supposed to take my family through like this whole like track workout and the track that we usually go to they like put extra like gates around it with like barbed wire and stuff so like no. we got the track, like, all closed and i was like no what the <laughs> heck <laughs> like i was so excited so we like drove all the way there just for it to be closed but um, I feel like I'm one of the, you know, luckier ones. I know a lot of uh, players um, that I know that, like, have access to nothing except for their house or what they have at home. So I definitely have a nice little setup over here for sure. That is very good. Always finding the silver lining of things. Um, speaking of silver linings, you said you finally found a home and a family with the Minnesota Lynx. So for people who are watching who maybe don't understand what I'm talking about, let me just briefly expl explain. You were drafted by the Connecticut Suns, were there your rookie season, and you didn't really play. Like, you you sat on the bench. It wasn't ideal. It wasn't your what you had hoped for. And then you got news that could be bad, which is you got traded. I know. It, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it, but exactly. Instead, it turned out to be like the best blessing in disguise. Right. What did being with the Lynx add to your game that maybe you didn't realize you needed? Um, probably my confidence. That was definitely my rookie season was like the first time I'd ever had like absolutely no confidence in like my game, and I was just like, I was just find myself thinking like, how did I like 
why am I in this league? Am I like all of a sudden not good enough? Like just little, just dumb thoughts like that kept creeping into my mind. So um, that was the first time I realized like how important confidence is for you. Like it's self-confidence. Um, you know, you could practice a shot a million times, but you know, if you get in the game and you have no confidence in yourself, you're not going to make that shot. So I had to like get that back and obviously playing overseas helped me um, get that back. But then when I got to Minnesota, I mean, they just literally just gave me all the comments in the world, like from day one. I mean, it was just incredible. And um, it was definitely like the, the experience, like I was, like had dreamed that about when I was little. I'm like, okay, so it, it's not terrible here. Like I can love it here. I love it here now. So like my rookie year had me like, I'm not, I don't want to play anymore. I suck all this kind of stuff. So when I got to Minnesota, you know, just my confidence, um, you know, I fell back in love with the game and, you know, just, I just had a lot more fun. For sure. Oh, I love that. And I think, you know, what's kind of interesting about your, your journey so far is it taught you patience. And I think as, I like as athletes, um, I played volleyball many years ago, but like, you're not taught patience because uh-huh. your life is your season. So you have a goal and you either accomplish the goal or you don't accomplish the goal and then you move on to the next one. So you don't uh-huh. ever learn that sometimes things just take time. Like no one teaches you that. And with your situation, you had to be a little bit more patient. Um, you know, so like, what did what did that experience teach you? Yeah, it was just like, you think like even like most like this is like the majority of like high level athletes like you're usually like one of the best players on your team so like I get to the in Connecticut and I'm like at the bottom of the bottom under the toe I'm like not even on the totem pole I'm like under it <laughs> oh, God. So I was like oh my gosh so my personal basketball goals kind of had to be put um to the side so you know I just had to I'm a goal oriented person. Like you said, when you're an athlete, everything is about achieving the goal and then move on, achieving Mm -hmm. the goal, move on. So I just had to figure out different goals. So I was like, all right, let me just be the most lit on the bench. Like, let me just make sure everybody sees me on the bench being like a fool. So like, that's what I was doing. Just having a great time, you know, with my teammates on the bench. And then I was like, okay, well, let me be the best shooter in practice. So let me do that. Let me just work on my personal physical fitness like let me just do that and um you know at the end of the season um my coach did notice that I never stopped working like he was like I never worried about you not being prepared he's like I just didn't need you this season like and probably won't need you in the future (laughs) that's why I got traded (laughs) so but he told me he's like your work ethic is unmatched and um you know that made me feel really good because I just, I always have to be doing something. I have to always be working towards something, um, you know. And at that time, it wasn't anything on the court because I wasn't on the court, really. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, it's true. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, so last question before we get into some fun rapid fire ones. Your viral video. Oh, your viral <laughs> Your viral video. People haven't asked me about that in a while, actually. It's so, so I just saw it and I love it. Like the, the like still of it is you just like, (laughs) just like me mugging the hell out of the camera. Guys, um, I I posted it on my Twitter. It, as of today, had 2.4 million views on just Twitter alone. So I would love to know in no particular order, what was the best thing about that video? What was the worst thing about that video? Um... Well, the best thing was I got so many Instagram followers. <laughs> I got like 30,000 followers in like two days. That's nuts. So that was really cool. And then the worst part was how people are so mean. Like, yeah. And they weren't even being, I was expecting like to get killed by like, you know, the internet trolls and stuff. But they mm-hmm. actually were like not that bad to me. Now, Darius who was I was playing against. <laughs> Poor Darius. They were so mean to him. And I'm like, because then, like, the, if you watch the whole video, he, like, ends up beating me, whatever, blah. Who cares? So they, <laughs> um, they were just, like, going in on him and killing him. I'm just like, it wasn't even, 
that deep of a video. Like it was just like just a goofy, funny video that we did. And I still don't know how it got on Bleacher Report because they just put it on YouTube and like things like that don't really always get on Bleacher Report. But I remember my little brother texted me and he was like, Lexi, you're on Bleacher Report. And I'm like, for what? Like we're not even in season right now. Like what did I do something bad? Like what happened? And then I go out with that video and I'm like, but it was funny for a few days and then it finally died down. But yeah, like when I when I like randomly like search myself on like Twitter or something, that's it first video is that one. So I'm like, it's not going anywhere. But I felt so bad for Darius because they were being so mean to him and he didn't deserve that. Maybe there all. needs to be a part two. Yeah. Well then like, he's gonna try and like demolish me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he was such a good sport about it because I remember I was like messaging him and I'm like, yo, I'm so sorry that this. I said, I promise you, I didn't like submit it to Bleach Report. Like, it wasn't me. But he was like a really good sport about it and we just laugh about it now. But that was, that was crazy. You gotta always think, like, I wanna go, I wanna go viral. But it's always like the most random nonsense something like you don't even think twice about oh maybe this will go viral and that's always the stuff that ends up going viral for people i think that's hysterical that's hysterical well on that note let's go ahead and, and take take a drink and cheers everyone who's watching please drink everybody cheers mm -hmm. this is funny like i this is the first time i've like drank on instagram live it's it's fun it's fun it um I, I've only gotten like really drunk once doing this, <laughs> but it tends to like, it's like I'm never drunk doing it, but it's like the after effects lead into it. So I remember we'll... one time and I think I was in college, I was drinking a little bit and then I went on Instagram live like later and my mom mm -hmm. texted me and she's like, are you drunk? Like what, what are you doing? Moms know, like, moms know I, everything. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. You're like, no, 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 I gotta, I'm not okay. leaving, mom. I'm crazy, so let me just get off. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so we're going to do some fun rapid-fire questions. has to be the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, try not to hesitate, but if you do, I get it, okay? All right. All right. Something people would be surprised to know about you. I can't cook. You can't cook? Like, oh. like anything? Um, Basics. But, like, don't expect me to whip up, like, a meal for you that you're like, oh, this is great. No. Okay. Okay, I know that you are in love with Mean Girls, a.k.a. Glenn Coco specifically. If you got to be in Mean Girls, which character would you want to be? Regina George. Regina George? Queen. Queen, Queen B. Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Okay, what is the most annoying thing people assume about having a dad who played in the NBA? Oh. You must have a lot of money, don't you? <laughs> no. I I don't. I do not. It's not mine. <laughs> oh god. Oh people, people, people. Um, what is the kindest thing a stranger has done for you? Paid for my gas. Oh, very sweet. That was sweet. Very that was so sweet. Just, hey, just he paid. Like left, he like left his thing open, and he was like, "Here, just fill up," and just drove off. Yeah. Wow. I know. I was like, "What did I do to deserve this?" You know, random acts of kindness really just make the world a better place. Yeah, really they really do. Okay, what is your go-to drink at a bar? Can I like have two answers? Can I have like of course young Lex so, and like mature Lex? Yes. So young Lex, it was tequila sunrise. Ooh, full of okay. calories. Gross. Mm. Now it's vodka soda with lime. <laughs> like it happens. Man. It happens. We we evolve as we get older with our drinking and our taste buds change. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I tried one recently and I was like, how did I drink? Five, not five. Let me take that down a little bit. Three. To four. <laughs> to four. Four and a half. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, fill in the blank. Never have I ever what? Ooh. Never have I ever... Oh, man. I don't know. That's a hard one. 
hard one. Never have I ever fell down the stairs. <laughs> well, thank God. That would be painful. I've done like a lot of, like, I'm trying to think of like, oh, I've done that. No, I've done that. No, I've done that. <laughs> All right, well, falling down the stairs. Okay. Um, what is the best piece of advice someone has given you? The best piece of advice someone has given you? Um, do you, boo? That's it. That's it. Love it. Okay, everyone who's watching, I want your answer as well. What was your favorite subject in school? Math. Wow. Algebra, to be exact. Pre-calc, too, was, was pretty fun for me. You're a numbers person. Really good at it. And anything I'm Wish. good at, you, you know, everything you're good at, you love, right? Yeah. I, science. we got math, we got art. science, English. I did like art when I was younger, because the art teachers were always the coolest. They were, they were so chill. Yeah. So chill. Yeah. yeah. They were super trying... chill or like reminded you of like your grandma or something. Like, right yeah. yeah i i'm trying to think what my favorite subject was a lot of history lunch i'm weak that's not a subject <laughs> it's not a subject that's a requirement <laughs> um i don't know i loved i had i was in yearbook which was like writing so like and oh, then like that's yeah. just kind of I, I, took, loved, I think i took yearbook my freshman year i loved it yeah it was but it was first period so it was like 7 30 in the morning so. i know it's super early french can't, can't do it. You know what's crazy is I was talking about how like I I can speak very like small Spanish and working in a restaurant like you'd think I would be able to speak more to communicate with the back of the house. I took Spanish since I was in fifth grade till the time I was a junior in high school. And the most I can say is, you know, cerveza con lima, por favor, which just means can I have a beer with a lime? <laughs> Important. That's, That's it. It's, 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 the only, it's the most important thing. Okay, what is an odd or weird talent that you have? An odd or weird talent. Oh, man. I don't have one. I don't have one. That's, like, one thing about myself that I, like, dislike is, like, I, like, don't – I don't do anything, like, spectacular. Like, I'm good at school. I'm good at basketball. I can dance a little bit. <laughs> That's <laughs> So you can dance. We'll say you can dance. Can dance. Okay. All right. Everyone who's watching, I want to know your answer to what's your guilty pleasure. Ooh, my guilty pleasure is like, is this like food or like just in like general? In general. I just went straight to food like a fat person. Um, <laughs> probably reality shows like Trash Reality, like Bad Girls Club. Bad Girls Club. Well, okay, I think I think that's a problem. That's not a guilty pleasure, my guy. Whoever wrote that? What did she say? What did he say? Someone put cocaine. <laughs> Someone put cocaine. Sir, watching House, uh, the Real Housewives, Honey Bun, light over here, sneakers, candy. Someone said coke. Light over here. He Jesus, that. my guilty pleasure is um, Jersey Shore. Oh my God, I love Jersey Shore. I love, I like hate how much I love it. Oh, my mom, Shameless, that's a great one. Love Shameless. That's a show, right? Yeah. Yes, PhD. so good, so, so good. Okay, um, what is a question you wish people would stop asking you? Can I play you one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, I wanna. <laughs> <laughs> oh I my God. <laughs> Or are you just, oh my gosh, I hate it. No, I don't it, want to play one-on-one. -on -one. Is, it, is no. it always guys? Yes. I'm just like, no, I don't want to play. Like, take me to, if you want to, it's literally like, can I play you one-on-one -on -one for your heart? Like, that's literally the sentence. I'm like, no, take me to go get some food or something. Like, you can take, you go. can take me to a steak dinner. How about yeah. that? I don't want to play basketball. That's oh all I God. do is play basketball. You think I'm going to play basketball with you? No. Oh, God. I think, you know what I'm, I'm learning as I get older? Men just don't know how to flirt. Like, they're really bad at it. Like, some of them are just really bad. Like, and I'll, like, it, and I don't even realize it's happening. And I'm, like, and then someone's, like, they were flirting with you. I'm, like, that's not flirting. Yeah, it's sad. It's, like, 
it's sad. People We're are definitely sad. Definitely the superior gender, but oh, yeah. they're mm-hmm. just. As I've gotten older, I'm just like, I'm, it takes so much to like get my attention, and then when people just start off with the basketball, I'm like, you're already done. You're it's done. like this. Like I, you're like, just like rolling my eyes. Like yeah. goodbye. Okay. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I am what I wanted to be when I when I grew up, grow up. So WNBA player, but my next what I want to be when I grow up is a GM of a sports team. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. yeah, hell yes. Boss lady. Okay. Boss lady. Yes. What do you wish people understood more about the WNBA? Um. I wish they understood how hard that, how hard we all work. Um, you know, we have to work hard on the court, obviously. Then a lot of us go overseas. Instead of having an off season to just chill, we go play another full season. And then on top of that, we like work hard to prove why we should be respected. And like, we shouldn't have to do that. But like we didn't do it like we have like we have amazing fans and amazing advocates for our sport but like coming from us it just hits a little different when it comes from the actual players um so on top of that we have to you know advocate for ourselves constantly um mm-hmm. which isn't really like a job I don't think I mean I enjoy doing it um you know so but it's just it's a lot of work um for for all female athletes I think I agree um, who should my next guest be? Who should your next guest be? Um, do you only talk to athletes or you talk to anybody? Anyone. So the, the premise of Bar Talk is I'm just trying to help people realize that we have more in common with each other than we have different. Mm-hmm. I just tend to love sports. So we yeah. just, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So well, she's not an athlete. So my friend Kelsey... She, um, I've known her since we've been little. Um, we went to like rival high schools and stuff in Florida when I lived in Florida. And now she has like this clothing line. She is a stylist. Like nice. she, she's amazing. She does hair. She does makeup. She's beautiful. She used to run track at Howard. Um, so she's an athlete, former athlete. Um, Love it. I will definitely reach out to her and ask just how Lana did with me. Um, yeah. Be great. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. That that would be fun to see how, because I love seeing former athletes excelling in the next chapter of their life. She's and like building like, it. Like, yeah. She's incredible. I'll send you her page when, when we're off this and you're going to be like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, that's how I <laughs> Oh, yay. I love it here. Like, that's literally her page. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, last two questions. What have you learned the most about yourself during this time in quarantine? Um, how much of a homebody I truly am. Like I always talk about how much of I'm, I'm a homebody, but like if mm-hmm. someone asks me to go out, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm down. But I'm also that, oh, I'm down. Like I'm that friend. Like, yeah. Like, let's go. Oh yeah, okay, I'm down. But like, I've been so content with just being at the house and just hanging out with my family. So, yeah, I mean, everyone's, oh, I'm a homebody, I'm a homebody, but I've seen a lot of homebodies out still Mm -hmm. during this time, and I'm still in my house, so definitely homebody. Homebody. Okay, and then lastly, when all of this is said and done, we can go back to living life. What's going to be the first thing that you do? First thing, I'm going to get my eyelashes done. <laughs> Dude, I cannot wait to get a goddamn pedicure. Well, are my nails so George is open, obviously. So, blessed. Got my nails done today. They're um, beautiful. Thank you. But my eyelash place is open too. But I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, what are my eyelashes done for? I mean, I really wear them because, like, when I play, I like to still, like, be kind of cutish when I'm on the court. Yeah. Um, we're not playing right now, so I guess I don't need my eyelashes, but I'm, I miss them. <laughs> it's probably been nice, though, to, like, actually. Oh, yeah, like, I wake up, and I'm like, uh. Yes. 
I went through a phase where I had eyelashes and then realized I didn't have any anymore. So then I, I know I, it's crazy. When I took them off for the first time after I started getting extensions, I was like, "Ew!" I, I bought um this lash booster and it actually like changed my. I can't, I couldn't believe how much it helped. Within like three months, I was yeah. The, people are like, "Are those real?" And I was like, "Yes, they are." Thank okay. you. I like pulled off my lashes. Like once all this started happening, I'm like. Because my lashes were looking crazy. And then everything shut down. So I was just like, nope, 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 nope. And I think I took my lashes with them. So I feel like everyone looked like the woman from The Emperor's New Groove. You remember with her crazy eyel- <laughs> eye- eyelashes? <laughs> like everyone's eyelashes started falling off. Man, like, I've seen, yeah. And I, I haven't gone this long without lashes in a while. So, I mean, it's kind of. I'm used to it now. Like I like yeah. I like being able to rub my eyes and stuff. But I once we are let outside again, lashes immediately. Lashes, lashes, lashes. All right, lady, if you will please raise your glass with me. Everyone who is watching, raise your glass. We always end on a toast, and this toast is actually the words that your dad said in an article about you, and he just said, "Keep putting good energy into the universe, and one day it'll return." Oh. Cheers, pus- everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh, my God. Lexi, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I did. I did. We will talk very, very soon. Um, stay safe, and I can't wait to finally see you back on a court I just, know. like, sinking threes like a filthy, filthy animal girl. Oh my god! I was watching your highlights, and I was just like mesmerized. I was like, "Oh my god, this is fantastic!" Oh, you. You're you like you're you're normally with the right thing. You shot it with the left, and it oh. still went in. I was like, "Oh my god!" That will never happen ever again. Don't say that. It's gonna <laughs> happen again. Yeah. You're you're gonna like do it with your eyes closed or like backwards or something. I'm crazy. Gonna do it on purpose this time. See, <laughs> y'all, it wasn't a, it wasn't a fluke, y'all. It wasn't a fluke. <laughs> all right, girl. You take care, and we'll talk soon. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. All right, guys was Lexi Brown. Um, someone had said on here, Jenna, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Uh, from the south side. I love it here. We're currently at my family's establishment, Shinnick's Pub. It's kind of how um, bar talk came about. So I'm a bartender. And when the whole kind of, you know, Corona stuff happened, I found that I was on furlough. And I needed a reason to wake up every morning. And I was planning on starting this as a podcast. And I thought, why not do it this way? Let me virtually be your bartender. Let's virtually share a drink and shoot the shit. And that's kind of how this happened. So we're at, I think it's episode tonight was 34 or five. I'm not sure, but been doing it for a while. Um, I'm loving it. And it's been a lot of fun. So guys, I will not be back tomorrow. I hope everyone enjoys their Mother's Day. I hope everyone is watching The Last Dance. That is what I will be doing. And uh, we will be back on Monday night with uh, Haley Elwood, the team reporter for the LA Chargers. So excited to talk shop with her a little bit. And maybe she can give us some details on the NFL and what's to come with that. But anyways, you guys um, stay safe. um, Stay at home. Wash your hands. Drink responsibly. And I will talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye-bye, guys.